Do you want to learn how to trade stocks and cryptocurrency? Join our community of traders. Go to richpicksdaily.com and find the next 10 bagger. everybody doing today i'm your host rich here we have a rich tv live with our very special guest many time guest the ceo of fosterville south exploration brian slasarchuk how you doing today brian doing really well rich thanks always a pleasure having you on the show big fan of what you're doing with a couple companies but fosterville south exploration has had some big 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 news and big things happening recently let's get started i wanted to break down Fosterville South just drilled a big intercept of high-grade gold at the start of the Reedy Creek drilling program. Why is this so important for the company, Brian? Well, absolutely, Rich. So Fosterville South has just announced a big hole at Reedy Creek. Reedy Creek is within our Providence project, and we are right at the start of the drill program there. In fact, this was reconnaissance drilling. We were using a reverse circulation drill rig and doing an initial pass in an area that had seen zero previous drilling. In fact, Rich, in the entire Reedy Creek gold field, there have only been two historic holes drilled. Those were vertical holes drilled in the 1890s. So this is really the first modern exploration of Reedy Creek. In this particular area that we had the big high-grade gold hit, As I say, there had been zero previous holes. The hole intersected 11 meters at 31.34 grams per ton gold. And included within this was an ultra high grade interval grading four meters at 80.05 grams per ton gold. So to get this type of success at any point, you know, it is fantastic. But to get it right at the start of a reconnaissance drill program where we were poking around in a new uh, area that had seen such limited past exploration has the technical team incredibly excited. So we're going to get the drill rig back there and follow up on this ASAP. And we really look forward to the next several weeks of news flow from Reedy Creek. Wow, that's impressive. Now, is Reedy Creek which is within the Providence project, the core focus of the project going forward? Well, it's interesting, Rich, as you know, and your viewers know, Fosterville South, due to our first mover status in Victoria, and that goes back to Rex Mott and our co-founder, our COO, being very much a local guy. Rex is a geologist that had worked all over the world, but Rex grew up in this area. He lives just down the road from Kirkland Lakes Fosterville Mine. So we had a big first mover advantage. We put together the premier exploration land package in Victoria, and we've now been exploring multiple projects. We've worked at our Golden Mountain project, Lauriston project, Morrimble project, and now we've just commenced work at Providence. What the flagship will be will evolve over time and that will be very drill results driven. And remember over the past year, the technical team for Fosterville South has been exceptionally busy getting access agreements in place, getting drill permits completed, getting drill contracts signed, doing geochemical work in the field and setting up the logistics for a big, big drill program. With that now in place, we're going to be drilling multiple projects concurrently. Wow. It's a very drill centric program going forward. And you're going to see information flowing from all of these projects and all of them have potential to be the flagship, obviously with this very high grade, big hit of gold at Reedy Creek. So early in the program, I do think that's where a lot of, if not most of the investor attention will be in the next several weeks. It's amazing what you guys are doing. And I know that the metals industry has really kind of been in a little bit of a rut recently. And it's probably because there's a lot of money pouring into cryptocurrency. And there's been this gold versus Bitcoin debate 
and it's been very aggressive. And, you know, people that love gold believe in gold. And a lot of people that believe in crypto believe in crypto. But at the end of the day, gold isn't going anywhere. Mining isn't going to go anywhere. So when the market goes down, in my opinion, that's the best time to buy. And I think this is the time for investors to really start looking at gold, junior miners, small caps, because they've been heavily oversold. I really, truly believe that across the board, from the large caps to the small caps, miners have been heavily oversold after having a really nice run for a couple of years to all-time highs for most of them. They've, they've, they've given back a lot of those gains. So as investors, and we have a large community of investors all over the world looking for undervalued, underappreciated, underexposed opportunities. This is the time to start looking, in my opinion, for small caps, large caps, and mid caps in the mining sector that have been heavily oversold. Now, in knowing that, with 4,000 square kilometers, you have the most important exploration land package in Victoria. How did this come to be? And how did you get your hands on all of this ground? Oh, Rich, I think it's a great question, and there's a great backstory to that. Uh, first off, when you talk Bitcoin and you talk gold, I find it very interesting. Number one, I really think that the millennial investors in particular that have been attracted to Bitcoin are attracted to it for all of the reasons that we like gold. And that's a general distrust in the financial system, a distrust in the big central bankers and big government running the printing presses around the clock. The fact that gold has withstood the test of time, has been a store of value, a store of wealth, a hedge against uncertainty, and a currency for thousands of years ought to, over time, I think, attract some of those people interested in Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies eventually into the gold space. That remains to be seen. But when the world's printing presses are running over time, printing paper currencies and gold as a competitor currency is the only currency that the Fed can't print. Gold inherently becomes more valuable every day. As far as our land package goes, this goes back to Rex Martin. Rex, very much a local geologist, as I mentioned, living just down the road from the Kirkland Lake Fosterville mine. Rex had a very successful career as an international geologist working all over the world, but he always kept an eye on his own backyard. And long before today's modern day gold rush taking place in Victoria, Rex, immediately after Kirkland Lake started to have their success at Fosterville, Rex began assembling and piecing together this very impressive land package that Fosterville South now has. As you know, within the 4,000 square kilometers of exploration tenements and tenement applications, we have 600 square kilometers immediately south of and bordering the Kirkland Lake Gold Fosterville mine tenements. It's incredibly exciting. And this past year of geochem work, sampling, mapping, et cetera, has now given us a multitude of drill ready walk-up drill targets that are accessible, permitted, and where through our field work, we've vectored in on some amazing targets within this ultra high grade region. Wow, this is exciting. We love here at Rich TV Live, early stage companies that are on the verge of something big. We're always looking for a catalyst as investors, right? You're looking for revenue growth. We've talked about this mergers and acquisitions something that's going to really be a catalyst for the stock. And sometimes it could be the price of gold. And we saw gold go over 2000 and I think it hit 2100. And when it did, all the gold stocks were on fire. And since then gold's come back down to still really high prices over 1700. And we've seen the gold stocks um, and all mining stocks really, really come back more than I think they should. So that's why I really believe that now is the time for investors to start looking at gold, looking at junior miners, looking at large caps, and trying to identify those early stage players that are on the verge of something big. And, and that's what you're talking about. You're talking about drilling. You're talking about finding these massive discoveries. That's what it takes for small caps to really get on, you know, like what we've seen with Kirkland Lake, for example, how they've been a huge success. 
we're always looking for the next Kirkland Lake. Now, you are the front and center of the company, but there are many great team members around the company making all of this work. Who are some of the other key players that you can talk about with Fosterville Self Exploration? Absolutely, Rich. It always takes a team to build real value in this space. And some of the members of our Fosterville South team have been involved in some of the best situations over the past few years in the space in terms of shareholder wealth creation. Rex Martin is very key to this whole uh, process. Rex, as a co-founder, as our chief operating officer, is the guy really leading the charge on the ground. He's based, as I've mentioned a couple of times now, right within this region. And we've got great local talent there. Lisa Gazis, who joined our board, was formerly with Kirkland Lakes Fosterville operation in different facets over the years. She is also local. We built a great team of local geological talent and in this COVID year, that's been a real blessing because of the fact our team, our key team members don't have to travel in and out of the region. They're based there. So we've got that home court advantage that a lot of companies don't have. We've got a great board that we put together, an independent director, for example, John Lewins. John is the CEO of K92 Mining a company I was very fortunate to be involved with as a co-founder and as the former president. Uh, John is a great independent director. He's also based in Australia, as many of you will know. We've got great technical support in terms of an advisor in Doug Kerwin, one of Australia's most well-known geologists, extremely incredible track record. And then board members such as Rob McMorrin, Charles Hethy, Jonathan Richards, really familiar names to people that follow the space. So we've got an incredible team. We're very well funded. Early on, we were fortunate to announce investments from the likes of Eric Sprott, Ross Beatty, some of Canada's best precious metals funds. We've got a great team of financial backers. We have just north of $25 million in cash and that makes us unique also. We've had this big early success at Reedy Creek, and we don't have to go to the market for financing to rapidly accelerate and ramp up that drill program on the back of this big hit. So I think we've got all the ingredients for an amazing year coming up. And the fact is we've had this huge hit at the same time there has been pressure on the gold equities, that combination for potential entrance to the name, you know, it just couldn't be better. Brian, could you touch on the share structure? We love the cash. Uh, can you talk to the community about the amount of shares issued outstanding? Yeah, absolutely. And the share structure here is another unique attribute of Fosterville South Exploration. Even though we have $25 million in cash, we have less than 68 million shares issued. Wow. And we have no debt. And what that, again, does is it's real potential torque. And some of these situations that we've all followed out there have had success. But by the time that success really ramps up, there are hundreds of millions of shares issued. And that's through no fault of management necessarily. It's timing. It's how well funded the companies were going into various programs, et cetera. And Fosterville South, we financed this well. And we kept the share structure tight so that if we have big results, shareholders can get real torque. And to have less than 68 million shares out with $25 million in cash, multiple drills turning, and a real newsy period coming up, I just think that it's a very compelling opportunity. And there's always risk in exploration. There's risk in the mining sector. Anybody that says there's no risk is doing you a disservice. But with that risk, I want to see big, big, huge potential reward and high grade gold in Victoria, Australia, definitely fits that bill. Brian, you just mentioned the trifecta for our community. No debt, 68 million shares. So it's super tight. We love that 
50 million or less is like what we call bingo. Uh, 100 million is super tight and you're at 68 million, super tight, no debt and 25 million in the bank. That's the trifecta. Then you throw in some of the big names like Eric Sprott. I mean, that is, you know, you're just adding fuel to the fire here. So just love the story here with possible self exploration. I think you guys are building the company the right way. You're checking off every single box for our community. Now let's talk about the price of gold because that has a huge effect on the entire sector. What do you think uh, is going on with the price of gold and where do you see the price of gold in the future? Sure. I think that the macro environment for gold has never been better. The setup is there. We've got quantitative easing, in infinity, fiscal and monetary stimulus, the likes of which the planet has never seen. We've got governments, central banks, printing paper money around the clock with reckless abandon. There's a lot of uncertainty out there. Paper currencies are becoming more and more worth less every day due to the increase in abundance of these currencies. As I said earlier, the Fed can't print more gold. And right now, gold inherently becomes more and more valuable against its competitor class of currencies. And I usually don't use the word competitor class. I use the word imposter paper currencies. And that's a fact. Gold is the only currency that has withstood the test of time. It's been a currency, a store of value for thousands of years. The setup right now, it's never been better. With that said, what that catalyst will be, that's always tough to tell. I think that it's a tinderbox. And once this match gets struck, gold has the potential to go parabolic. And, and that's my outlook on gold is that all the ingredients are there. We can have an incredible move to the upside in gold. What sets that off? What kicks it off? That's always tough to tell. But with the ingredients in place as they are, I, I'm really looking forward to the next several months to see what the price of gold does. At the same time, even at today's gold price, the gold miners are printing an incredible amount of free cash flow. The gold miners are in great shape. And as those larger cap companies build up their cash positions, what do they do with the cash? Number one, they either increase their dividend policy or two, share buybacks, which generally shareholders don't love for obvious reasons, or three, they go into M&A mode. And any of these things is good for the sector as a whole. So not only am I bullish on the price of gold, but with or without a move in the price of gold, I'm extremely bullish on the gold equities. You and me both. I definitely need to get myself some more gold positions right now. Now, if you guys like these videos, please smash the like button, comment down below, share the video everywhere and subscribe. Let us know what you think about Fosterville South Exploration. We're here with the CEO, Brian Slosarchuk. Brian, thank you for joining us today. Hopefully we can invite you back anytime you have big breaking news or anything you want to talk about. We'd love to invite you back uh, in, on our show so you can get in front of our community and our investors. And guys, I just want to remind you that Rich TV Live is strictly for information and education purposes. Please do your due diligence, do your research before you invest in anything that we talk about here on Rich TV Live. Invest in the best. The best is blessed. And we love to bring you the best early stage, undervalued, underappreciated, underexposed opportunities. I feel like we do it better than anyone else. We love to interview the CEOs and we'd love to have you on the show. Thank you for joining us, Brian. Great. Thanks so much, Rich. Always a pleasure. Thank you guys for watching. Like I said, if you're not winning, you're not watching. We bring you the winners and we bring them to you first. Thank you for watching, everybody, and have a nice day. All right. That was good. Great. I thought